Hi, I'm Lillian Gray, South African fine artist, and this lesson is how to draw a mouth. Like the eyes, the mouth can convey a lot of emotion, happiness, sadness, excitement, and disgust. Drawing mouths can be tricky since everyone's mouth is different, but the shape also changes as the facial expression changes. So for this lesson, we are going to keep things simple and focus on drawing a closed mouth first. Once you understand the anatomy of the mouth and how to draw the lips from various views, it will be much easier for you to draw various expressions. First understand the basics and then proceed to challenge yourself by drawing mouths that are open and with teeth showing. Because the mouth is not a separate element of the face and it's closely tied to the nose, I recommend you take a look at my How to Draw a Nose video as well. To draw the mouth in proportion to the face, please also watch How to Draw a Face. If you are a beginner, let's not complicate things too much. Let's just start by drawing a mouth in the most basic shapes. I usually start by drawing the middle line. I add two small circles on top and I use half an oval for the bottom lip. For the top line, I then simply go over in, over again and out to give me the top lip. This is a mouth in its simplest form. Build your confidence with this technique and then let's move on to an even deeper understanding so we can draw a mouth super realistic. To understand what we are drawing, it is important to familiarize yourself with the basic structure of the mouth. I want you to think of the mouth as if it's placed on a cheese wheel. This is super important when looking at the lips from any angle. You need to be aware of how the lips wrap around the cheese wheel. The center line curves as it gets pushed out. When viewed from the top or bottom, the lips wrap around the cylinder. Avoid drawing lips as if they are on a flat plane. Even when you view the lips from the front, the middle line is never really straight. It's much, much more nuanced with little bumps and curves. Pay careful attention to this. Looking from the front, let's identify the various sections of the mouth. We have the philtrum, which is the little indent at the top, the tubercle, the upper lip, the lower lip, and the nose. Let's break the mouth into basic shapes. The top middle part is shaped like a heart, called the tubercle. On the side are two shapes making the upper lip. The bottom section consists of two ovals. The two ovals are resting on two pillars leaning in towards each other. Between these two pillars is the circle that makes the chin, creating a curve that makes a dark indent under the bottom lip. To get a better idea of all these forms, take a look in the mirror and try to identify them on your own face. Never be afraid to be your own reference. Once you are familiar with the basic shapes of the lip, where and how you place these little ovals or circles can really change the lips. There are no perfect lips. We are all unique and completely different. Generally speaking, artists talk about masculine lips and feminine lips. Masculine lips are thinner and less pronounced and feminine lips are fuller with darker pigmentation. This, however, is quite an oversimplification based more on certain beauty standards than on reality. The simple structure is not set in stone. The lips have many different shapes created just by changing the proportion of the elements slightly. See how changing these circles slightly in both from the front view and the profile view changes the lips considerably. Let's look at how light falls on the mouth. Usually the top lip is darker than the bottom lip. This is because the light falls directly on the protruding bottom lip and the top lip is bent away and cast in shadow. As a general rule of thumb, the top lip is darker than the bottom lip. Because our lips tend to have moisture on them, the highlights on the lips are much more crisp and shiny than what they are on our skin. This is even more evident when we wear lip gloss. For an even deeper understanding of the light on the chin, mouth and nose area, think of paper folded into strips. The light will fall on the one strip and cast a shadow on the next strip. It will follow a pattern of 
dark light, dark light, dark light. In the same way, the lips can be broken down into folds. It follows the same pattern. Dark light, dark light, dark light. Usually, the lips are pigmented differently than the rest of the mouth. They're more pinkish or reddish. The local value of the lips really depends on the race of the person. Normally, the lips' local value is darker on a lighter skin and lighter on a darker skin. The upper lip is usually framed by a small edge that catches the light. Do not make this too prominent since it could look like a white outline. When we are not wearing lipstick and the lips are in its natural color, some edges of the lip can fade into the light of the skin. Pay careful attention to this since it can really make your lips look more realistic and fleshy. When shading the lips, be aware of the contour lines. The contour lines bend out from the center and make all the little creases in the lip skin. The shadows usually follow these contour lines. Lips are very mobile. There are so many muscles in and around them that they're able to change their shapes in hundreds of ways. This makes them extremely expressive. Experiment with the position of the nodes, the little jelly beans, to drag the corners of the lips up and down and to the sides. You can learn a lot about the mobility of your lips by just observing yourself in the mirror. For exercise one, I want you to familiarize yourself with the basic shapes of the mouth. Practice drawing the ovals, the heart, the pillars, and the chin from the front. See if you can add the shading as well. For exercise two, I'd like you guys to draw a closed mouth from various angles. Keep the cheese wheel in mind when doing this and how the axes are curving around the wheel. that are up for a real challenge, proceed to exercise 3. I'd like you guys to draw a mouth forming part of various facial expression. Move the jelly beans, the nodes around to show various facial expressions. Remember to draw what you see and not what you think you see. Always, always simplify back into your basic shapes. and draw mouths from the various stages of life. When we are young, our lips are plump and full, and with age our mouth tends to thin out and the skin around our mouth has more wrinkles. See if you can depict age in the various mouths. And that's all the little tips and tricks that I've got for you on mouths, and I hope it looks super real now when you try and draw it. This is Lillian Gray, please remember to like and subscribe.